talking about up and down and topsy turvy and talking about bumps in the road, this Texas law has had that. That's for sure. Let me tell you what's happening. Uh, there's a law in Texas, the fetal heartbeat law, that has been challenged and includes now a challenge by the Department of Justice. September 1st, this law went into effect and it bans abortions once a baby's heartbeat is detected. But it puts the enforcement um, procedure in the hands of individual citizens. And so that's what makes it very interesting. And like you said, uh, the abortion advocates, they sued Texas immediately. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court let it stand on procedural grounds. Now the DOJ has sued Texas. And we saw a district judge last Wednesday grant a preliminary injunction in joining the law. But on Friday, Texas went to the uh, Fifth Circuit Appeals Court and the Fifth Circuit Appeals Court granted an administrative stay. So as it stands right now, this law banning abortions effectively is in effect in Texas. Now the DOJ did answer yesterday, and so we will see what the, the Fifth Circuit says, if it can stand or if it'll be enjoined pending this appeal. It's ironic that Planned Parenthood needed the help of the Department of Justice here. Pretty big organization. It's, they have the right to do it, DOJ, to enter into it, obviously, but it just tells you where the, with the, where the administration is on these issues and, frankly, what the outcome is going to be as far as their staying involvement. The Department of Justice isn't going to stay engaged in this. Well, the abortion lobby is an enormous force in Washington, D.C., as you know, Jay. I mean, I would, I would take it all the way back to when Joe Biden was running for president. They essentially got him to reverse four decades of abortion policy, his view on the Hyde Amendment, his view on whether or not taxpayers should have to fund abortion. But I think it's particularly ironic when you talk about about these line of cases, Jay, because we're at a point in our nation's history where this debate over when life begins and when life in the womb merits protection is really raging in the states. I mean, we're talking about the Texas law today that protects life after a heartbeat, but you've also got that law in Mississippi that's heading for the Supreme Court. They would uh, restrict abortion after 15 weeks of age. Uh, so you really are seeing the process play out in a way that our founders envisioned. We filed briefs, and of course, the in the case, and that's going to—that is the direct challenge, CC to Roe versus Wade. So Roe is up for a direct challenge in a case at the Supreme Court that's going to be heard in December, and the ACLJ, the European Center for Law and Justice, and other entities filed three separate briefs in those cases. And the European Center of, uh, for Law and Justice brief was amazing because it literally states how European law is is better on abortion than American law. And I think many people don't understand that because they think that the United States is conservative, but we are not conservative on this issue, on protecting a baby's life. The uh, restrictions on avortement, to use the French word, or abortion are much stricter, and the right and sanctity to life in Europe is much more is much greater in the European countries than in the United States. And isn't that, Jay, a sad commentary on the state of the American legal system and what we feel about life. What are they doing in Washington, D.C., Jay? The House of Representatives has actually already passed a bill, and Leader Schumer has said he is going to call it for a vote in the United States Senate in the coming weeks. That would do what, Jay? It would codify Roe, and it would say all of these restrictions, all of this debate that's happening in the states, uh, that would be preempted. So, Jay, the Mississippi law would go off the books. The Texas law would go off the books. The other laws would go off the books. And by the way, it's not just restrictions that protect the life of the unborn, Jay. It's even safety protocols for women, hospital admitting privileges. All of those pieces of, of safety uh, provisions would go off the books if this legislation would pass. It's been an issue that has changed a lot as technology has changed, as people's tone has changed. Uh, and I think that there is even undercurrents within the church. You have to have this discussion now. It used to be a pretty uh, you know, black and white issue when it comes to where the church stood on it. That's, that's shifted a lot. The fact of the matter is the medical science has advanced so much that arguing that this is not a life Really, you know, that whole argument that this is not a human life makes absolutely no sense when you just look at the science. And I think Planned Parenthood knows that. They're losing the battle there. People know that this is a baby, but they try to spin it and they try to make it about women's rights and a woman's right to access reproductive health care. They don't want to talk about 
this woman is choosing to terminate the life of her child. But we see that, like in South Dakota, where where we are fight, are representing South Dakota, there are common sense laws in place, common sense laws that require informed consent. And if you're ever going to have informed consent, it should be when you're making a medical decision to terminate right. the life of a baby. These are unique approaches, and I think very worthy of of fighting and the American Center for Law and Justice, our European Center for Law and Justice, are all engaged in this issue front and center. The, I mean, we are on top of this, folks. We are in the in the Supreme Court of the United States with three briefs. We're at the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. We're in a trial court. Uh, we're about in the Third Circuit in New Jersey. So we are heavily vested in standing up for life.